Hello, my friend. Welcome to your reading. Let me just verify the sound. Test mic. Check, 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 check. Okay, hello, love my Okay, that's good. All right, cool. And uh, clock, clock, go clock. Mm, okay, boom. So here we are. Um, I guess everything's hidden, so let's share the screen. And, uh, yeah, 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 sometimes I like to be, uh, off camera for a little bit. I'm very random. I'll have readings where I'm, like, just on camera the whole time, then I'll have readings where, um, I'm off and back and forth and whatever. I'm, I'm pretty unpredictable kind of dude um but anyway the importance is not in what is shown it is it is in what is said so let's pull the aspect grid up okay but just to make sure yeah okay so perfect um all right well well, well, well. Very interesting. Um, I like to look at a chart and just what pops out right away, you know? Well, I see a grand trine. Blah, blah, blah with lots of, I mean, We'll see like what, what it constitutes of. So it's Neptune, Saturn, and then Mercury. No? Venus would be the closest one. Mercury or Venus is a conjunct. In fire. So you have a fire grand trine, Earth house, Earth houses. That's quite interesting. Um so Sun in Aries conjunct South Node. Very, 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 uh, very strong karmic energy there. Um, especially with any squares. No. Let me just check. Cardinal six. Okay. Hmm. I would put I use really large orbs for, yeah, I mean, it's nine degrees. So yeah, Pluto conjunct North Node, that's massive in the 12th house. Woo! Wow, wow, wow. Um, and you're a Scorpio rising too. So the ruling planet is in the 12th conjunct the North Node. But Pluto, I hold very, very high, highly. Um, so this is really interesting. Um, right off the bat. Um... And then Moon in Virgo. Wow. Okay, I didn't expect that. And then you've got um so you got the fire. Obviously, lots of fire. Well, yeah. Grand Trine and Fire. Um and you got the water, the earth, more water with the Mars and Cancer. But where's the air? I mean, Jupiter and Gemini. Yeah. Um, I'm talking more about, you know, the big six personal planets when I, when I speak about that. Jupiter is kind of like in this like middle state where the sign still does really, you know, come into play. It changes like once a year. It's kind of like a middle planet. Um, the inner planet in, in astrology, you know, planets, uh, it's 
just planetary points that way putting it it's you know the big three sun moon ascendant venus mars mercury and then jupiter's kind of like uh in the middle and then you have the outers uh and you the sign of the outers i'm not gonna say it doesn't matter but um it's more generational moves a lot slower um and yeah it has less of like a like it has more more there's more more at play with like the sign of your like you know pluto or your neptune uh or with your it's more important the aspect it makes and what house it falls in but like if you're talking to someone from like a different generation that's where like you know the you can kind of like feel into into that those types of energies like they're like yeah jet I made a post. I had a concept where they're like the generational big three: um, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. I need to repost that, and I actually need to rewrite to repost that. Not that. Um, but um, yeah, so. Virgo moon, huh? Um, that is always an interesting one. Um, to have twenty two degrees also, so that's a Saturnian degree, Capricornian Saturnian degree. Um, it's in eleventh house. It makes a square to Neptune and a square to Jupiter, but the Neptune one is way more important. Uh, your sun. Okay, so your moon and your sun both form a t-square with jupiter that is very interesting um so that can be like very over over indulgent overly indulgent um now i must say that you do have um you know like some people like what like what like, i don't know if i've ever seen a t-square sun jupiter moon um now this would also make it so you have sun opposite moon but they're not in opposite sign so that's kind of like where it's a little bit iffy um cuz you see how it's working right like um this is five degrees from being like a complete 90 degree square sun to Jupiter. And um, then the moon, it's also five degrees. So either way, you know, Jupiter, it's the midpoint between your sun, and your moon is your Jupiter, which is very significant. If you bring uh, midpoints into, into, uh, you know, the sun moon midpoint representing the, uh, <clears throat> see what it really, so you see, like you can't see, <laughs> this is what I have to look at every day. Um, I feel like you know how to differentiate the numbers. Um, yeah, it's literally point zero three from being exactly the midpoint. And while I'm at it, I might as well just like take a peek. And all this. These are just like my extended asteroids and aspects. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So just so you know, as I see that you have lust rising, I have no idea what you look like. I purposely do that. Um, I don't look at any photos, any social media of my clients. I go straight in with nothing. I wrote a post about it today, but I didn't post it. I'll post it soon. Okay. Is it 26? Yeah. Uh, oh, is it the nebula on your moon? 
Ooh, look at you. Okay, that's a big deal. I'm happy I knew that. Um, because you have your moon conjunct um, the nebula, which is a star very, very related to um, to astrology and all esoteric topics, right? Um, in Babylonian ancient astrology, the nebula is is really about um, it's one of like the three stars um really really linked to astrology not a lot of people know that it's uh hydra the nebula zosma astrology or just like really like like esoteric truth seeking right so when you have your moon on there it's very interesting someone who you know virgo moon really wants to get to the bottom of everything um right so so so, so yeah but um so that's that's cool because when I when I, I when I get clients to um to have Virgo placements, I always it's very, very, very common that it's Denebola. Because it does you know, not that Virgo is not a spiritual sign in by itself, it is, right? It's in the Pisces, the Virgo Pisces axis is you know, the more it's the most spiritual axis. Um so they're the same energy, just opposite manifestations, right? And you know how how deeply spiritual Pisces is, right? So, um, basically, yeah. Um, interesting stuff. But yeah, anyways. So so with that that um that midpoint of the sun being on Jupiter, um, you know there you don't have it wouldn't be um a t square actually because um the sun and the moon are not opposite right you're you're not born you're not a full moon baby you're close but you're not you're not you know it was uh it was not it was uh it was after it was after after by about it would have been two, eight, six, three days. No, what are we talking about? Um, yeah, so, hmm. Mm hmm, hmm, hmm. The best way I can I can kind of put it is um one second. Excuse me. So So yeah, um anyways, yeah, so it it is um yeah, it's interesting it would have been it would have been Yeah, like two two days before uh before you're born was a full moon in Libra. So just let that sit in for a little bit. Um because we just you know finished an eclipse, which is uh, you know, a solar eclipse, so it's it's a new moon. But it's it was a very intense one because it was square Pluto, right? Um, so 
it brought up a lot for a lot of people and eclipses are just more intense in general so i'm sure you've i mean all of us that follow astrology and you know know you know understand you know these energies like we we tune in and we 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 feel you know and obviously it depends on our individual charts like the really intense full moons and really intense new moons mostly more full moons though right new moons uh are typically not that you know not as difficult usually but it depends on what's going on in the new moon chart <clears throat> chart but the two days after a full moon there's always a sense of ease um there's that build up that build up that build up and then you know sometimes i feel like it's like one or two days before the actual full moon because it kind of can catch you by surprise that that things are the most intense so two days after um is 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 interesting wait what what am i talking about jesse pierre i am crazy i am losing my mind why did i what, like yeah what i just made a brain fart no you were born right before a full moon what am i talking about Duh. um i think i need to go get go uh get uh brain surgery I don't know why I just thought that. But anyways, yeah, no, so you were born. Um, the moon is, a, you know, right a day from, you know, like around a day, a little bit over a day. Um, well, actually, no, like less than a day because it moves around 12, 13, 13 degrees a day. So eight. 10 so it's it's 10 10 um hmm. yeah so yeah um the day you know like like a day before a full moon is very interesting um the energy it's very intense and yeah, it, it was uh before yeah a, a, a full moon in Libra. So that same um energy can be felt in the nail chart, right? Because you can really think about astrology as being a replication of your birth chart of you know what what was going on in in the sky that day what was the energy like of the day of your birth right what was going on um so you know when it's before a new moon a full moon like that you know things are, are heating up and there's a sense of of of, of karmic uh like a desire for karmic uh, uh completion right that's what's wanted and that's what the soul is going for in this life and i see it all over the chart um having north node and pluto in the 12th house is just like the big big giveaway right and um yeah but um yeah so the, the moon phase would have been the balsamic phase or wait, no. Um, is is it? It's Gibbous, right? Yeah, Gibbous is before the full moon. Um, because yeah, a Gibbous phase. It's it's all about refinement. Um, you know, you're getting closer to that. To that karmic, uh, that real karmic goal. So it's really a, a lot about um kind of going out in the world and learning new teachings and, and just really, you know, finding tangible ways, you know, to 
with you know having a, a very clear awareness of your mission right um people born during that phase i feel like tend to have that kind of action kind of you know like uh, a lot of awareness right um so it will feel like you know you're on the edge of, of really completing something massive in this lifetime now um yeah there's like this this karmic urgency to really really complete um so there's lots of past life gifts the sun can go to the south node um and i'll get i'll get to the jupiter stuff in a sec but you know that is um very 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 interesting whenever i see that which isn't very often because in Aries, which is a very dominant sign, your south node being there too, it's like in the sixth house, the ruler, <laughs> um, Mars being Cancer in the ninth, which is um, squaring Mercury, sextiling the moon. Yeah, I mean, you know, you are, that's like past like king slash queen like energy, you know? Um, and I don't necessarily mean that literally, although it's possible, but um, you know, it's it's um, it, it's it's very prominent in people who have achieved a lot of great things in past lives during the karma that they're bringing to this lifetime and it kind of became a large part of your identity <laughs> um so people ha with sun conjunct south node they had this like yeah because this this um this was this was actually an eclipse you were born um right before not just a full moon but a lunar eclipse Right, because the nodes are involved, so that adds even more of a karmic dimension to your life. Um, and the fact that you know you have that that sun there, so some people with that, um, they can come into this life. It's kind of like I have, and it's in Aries, right? So like I have mine in Leo, and it's it's similar but more more intense, right? <laughs> Where Sometimes a person can feel a sense of entitlement. Um, like, imagine if just like the king of the world or the queen of the world just came back incarnated and, and you know, I don't know your circumstances, but I assume you're not the king of the world or I would know your name. Even if you are very prominent, which is possible, I, I never know, right? um it's still like you know um the tendency is usually that these people are not i mean they can be but um it's not like if your son's on your south node that you're gonna be for sure born into like a really rich and regal family like uh it's more about the karmic past and just having been different um in some way than you know, and, and really stood out in the crowd. Um, so I think that it can, it can, it, so, so, so this, there's this really interesting energy in your chart, right? With the both sun and moon squaring, squaring Jupiter, um, which can lead to like overindulgence, laziness, um, overconfidence, um but also like major leadership and what i call superman superman or superwoman syndrome where you feel like you can just take on anything um so it's really important when you have that to to be to kind of lean into that virgo moon's uh tendency to to analyze sometimes virgo moons analyze too much right 
So I'm I'm very curious, and I think you let me let me do this really quick. Um, let me look at this real quick. It's the list to see if you got the follow up. I think you did. Yeah, you did. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, to hear about that in the follow up. Um, I kind of liked how I had that going. This in case can within its blocking. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that, you know, with the moon, let's go back to that. Yeah. So, so with the moon square Jupiter, um, and sun square Jupiter, it definitely is makes someone very outgoing, very very good leader. But sometimes they can, you know kind of promise too much or just like, like, like have a very, like, like, like they can be like overly expansive, you know? Um, but it does give a very like kind of bubbly and outgoing nature and lots of popularity. Um, but yeah. Um, because with the one with the moon is interesting though. Um, it can really relate to relationships and just like having like kind of tumultuous, tumultuous relationships, like, like turmoil in that area of life. And it can make self-discipline difficult. Right. Um, so, and just like the whole idea of like going to extremes, right. Um, and being like kind of extravagant. And the fact that you have lust on your descendant, like I know lust very well. My girlfriend has lust rising. It is the asteroid of sexy. I'm just telling you, right? So I've seen it so many times show up in people's charts and then they talk to them and they're like, yeah, I've had a stalker or like, you know, blah, 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 whatever, you know? On the descendant, obviously it's not going to be as strong, but it still um, is on an angle. And uh, it's close to Ch Chiron also. So, yeah. Um, what can happen also with that one, um, there can be setbacks. Um, arrogance is like one potential, right? Um, and it's really important... Um, because it, it can make people um, have setbacks if they just like don't ground themselves and kind of like really, and that's why having a Virgo moon is actually really nice with this, 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 this uh, these two aspects. But yeah, they can have setbacks and um, from just moving too fast. Um, also, but also, it's also very linked to spirituality. Um, even like religion, whatever you know, finding God, and yeah, just overall, I think that when you combine the sun, which I have as well, it yeah, the sun is the ultimate like Superman, Superwoman syndrome, you know, where you just feel like anything is possible which is awesome right um but there can be like a over like you can like kind of overestimate like what you're like it, it can lead one to burnout in certain fields for example like like where they might be like okay i can do this i can do this i can do that i can do this I can learn, I can do all this stuff. And then they, 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 before they know it, it's like, they're just like, you know, they promised way too much or they just like took on way too much. Um, but it is really, really good for success. Um, but you have to, the thing about this one is that you have to make your own luck. Right. And there can be like an inflated ego 
and yeah, like I said before, like an overestimation of, of ability. Um, so another thing is like spending, right? It's like um, it, it can kind of make one like overspend, um, exaggerate that area of life, of possessions, right? <laughs> um, really, really like uh, luxury. Now, Virgo moons typically are not like that. Um, but yeah, just like excessive behaviors, right? Um, so the key there is moderation, right? Um, kind of like keep, keep the ego at check because the sun conjunct south node, there will be past life memories, unconscious ones of being this prominent person, right? And then Jupiter is, is kind of psyching it up even more, right? So it's really a real karmic test of your ego. Now, this is a very interesting chart because that is the ego, but then there's so much about the soul, right? Um, this is gonna be this is so interesting. So, yeah, like basically, um, it's a big ego test. Um, so the person has to watch out for for being arrogant because they can be like covering up like you know bruised ego, really wanting to like, but like it really pushes people with this towards like, um, influence, wealth, all that stuff, you know, praise. Um, but yeah, just like not getting ahead of yourself, <laughs> um, the daily grind, you know, um, just what it takes to kind of like, um, really harness your gifts and not spread your energy out in all these different places. Um, so You know, with with the sun in 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 the, in the south node, um, you know, because of that Jupiter energy, which you know maybe you did grow up in like a a wealthy family, I don't know, um, but sometimes it can feel difficult to kind of move ahead for people like that. But you you it, you are an Aries sun, so that is the you know one of the signs of moving ahead. You know, um, but aside from that, um. Yeah, there can be like lots of like um kind of early conditioning um that really influenced you. And it can make you very, you know, connected to the past, right? Um so the past tendencies of being very independent and Aries and just like the leader and and just going for it, you know, and and being that person that's just not afraid to just, you know, even, even if it's like something physical, like sports or whatever, right? Like a warrior type energy, right? Um, so yeah, you're very attached to the energy of Aries, right? Um, but <clears throat> that can make it even more difficult to lean into your North Node, which is Libra in the 12th house which is about relationships, right? So a, someone with a chart like this is telling me karmically there's a tendency to to really put yourself first. I'm not saying you're selfish. I'm saying that there's immense creative talent, immense just talent in general. And because of that, um, and I, I have like literally like a very similar thing in my in my nail chart. So like I can relate. Um, it just makes the idea of compromise difficult with relationships because it's like, you know, I want my freedom. Like I want to fully individuate myself, you know, like I want to take myself to my maximum potential. So with the North node, which is like the kind of destiny, like the mountain <laughs> never climbed in past lives, uh, in Libra, you know, you're trying to learn compromise, diplomacy, tact. And some of the lower energies of, of Aries can be being a little bit too rugged, being a little bit too hard, you know, rough around the edges and all that. And uh, also, you know, being like lower, lower, lower Aries. I'm just saying lower Aries, I'm not saying you have this, can be a little childish, bullyish, that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> it's really, yeah, about learning to... Um, you know, especially in the 12th house, conjunct Pluto, 
you know, shadow work is going to be prominent in your life. Is a Scorpio rising, you know, with the sign that rules your rising in the 12th. Um, but there will be, you know, some deeply buried wounds that need to kind of come up, right? Now, these are very karmic and Pluto, you know, would be opposite the south node. So um, that, you know, that can speak to past life trauma. Um, and <clears throat> you may not have experienced it in this lifetime, like in my case, I'm sorry to bring myself up. It's just I only do it when it's relevant. But um, I, I have I have Pluto square uh, the the nodes and or, you know, on the IC, so it relates to, like past like trauma, not in this life, right? And that was like a huge revelation for me, like when I learned that it was like holy fuck. But yeah, so that could be the case. Um, but yeah. Sometimes Aries can be very proud and very in the kind of here and now. And and yeah, they just want to do what they want to do. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it is your sun sign once again, right? So you're, you, you are here to continue something that you've started. But this time around, you're meant to kind of incorporate others. Um, you know, you're meant to to dive deep into your spirituality and and self-discovery right um that's very very important so i'm just grabbing something real quick from the fridge i think i'm out oh no i got two i'm a big fan of lucha lucha yeah, we're here. What is that? Put this in the fridge. So, um, so, 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 so. So, yeah, um, you know, Scorpio rising, um, will, you know, t tends to kind of like, attack life in a very methodical way like they have a massive presence um you know whether they are aware of it or not like people notice scorpio risings when they walk in the room and you have uranus in your first house so it's like you're meant to be this real just individual you know this real individual right like unique pioneering inventive all that um but I think that um like like going back to what I was saying before, I'll I'll wrap back around. I I always do big tours. Um there you know, from a karmic perspective, right? Um from a karmic karmic perspective. Having this, um, this conjunction. One second. Yeah, it, it can, it can, it, yeah, it, it just, it can be, it can, it can be kind of difficult. As I was saying before, um, when it comes to spiritual growth, because the soul is coming in this lifetime used to kind of having had that praise and that recognition. And, you know, when you're, for example, the king, no one's like coming and telling you, hey, do this spiritual work, you know, hey, do this, the shadow work, you know, like, like, hey, like, look at this part of your unconscious. So that's, you know, one aspect of it, right? Um, as we don't say that, so it can actually like have like an inhibiting um effect on the um like on you spiritually, right? Um, even though it is 
so badass and cool. Um, yeah, very royal backgrounds, and I'm feeling it. Um, so sometimes, yeah, like people with that, or like you know, prominent Leo rising, Leo South, and like they they can they can come in this lifetime and be like and, and expect fame, be like you know, because like and, and it can be frustrating, right? And with this, the Jupiter squares, there can be this energy of like, you know, like, think, like I don't need to do anything. Like, things are just going to come to me. And, you know, um, as I said, you know, you're being asked to kind of create your own luck in this lifetime, right? Because, like, you're still able to tap in to this, you know, regal south node conjunct sun Aries energy. But you're supposed to focus, you know, on the North Node as you grow older, right? So you can take um, the Aries, right? And use it to initiate spiritual 12th house. You know, this could relate to like spiritual relationships or just like um, spiritual peace, right? Like with like finding like, like that real deep. I mean, like with the Pluto, it's very clear to me that this lifetime is very much about going deep within so there's this big ego versus soul potential battle right i'm not saying that's how it's playing out but that's how it could be but with pluto in the 12th that is literally one of the most spiritual placements that exists <laughs> um from a karmic perspective it's like you're meant to dive deep into yourself. Um, so, and this is like the metaphors we use in astrology, right? Like Saturn represents the rock, right? Uh, I'm going to put myself back. So, Saturn represents, you know, the rock. It's represented by rocks. Um, you know, solid material. Um, okay, I have to pause for a second. Um, yeah, so basically, as I was alluding to, um, Pluto is where there's darkness, and the North Node is destiny. So the two together is it's where there's darkness, Pluto, but where by going into that darkness, you have the greatest growth. <laughs> North Node is like, you know, the mountain never climbed a past life. So both of them are very, the two most prominent points in the chart when it comes to the soul reaching its karmic goals. And they're both in the 12th house. 12th house is the last house. It's the house of, 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 of spirit, of, of deep spirituality, right? Of, of, um, the zeitgeist, um, you know, of the, the just oneness, it's a house of oneness, of spirit, of um, just compassion, love, um, everything associated with Pisces, right? Imagination, dreams, um, but really about karmic completion is is how how it's seen in this context. Now I continue. So Pluto, I was talking about Saturn. Saturn is is think about Saturn like the consensus reality, right? It's rules, you know, it's ruled by rock. And um, so the metaphor I give is that moving in, having this placement um, <clears throat> is akin to taking a leap off of the rock, which is Nef uh, Saturn, into the infinite waters of Neptune. So I don't know if you've been cliff jumping before, but, you know. Even though you know you, if you've looked underneath, make sure there's no rocks that you're going to be safe. It's still unnerving if it's a, you know if it's like a high like a high cliff into some water, right? It's, but that's kind of the energy, right? Is that it's a leap of faith into the unknown, mm -hmm. but it's not such unknown unknown because of the spiritual connection with the divine. That you've created, right?
So that's really what it's all about. And it's also about service um, and exploring, you know, like a huge need to explore the unconscious realms, right? Um, Pluto can bring power. It can bring a, obsession, right? So there can be like an obsession with trying to, you know, make the unconscious conscious, right? Um, and it is a very, very interesting place to have your Pluto. Um, also, there can be a level of, of, of crises, um, especially with the 22 degree moon and the fact that the moon squares Neptune, which I'll talk about next. Oh, actually, I'll go Jupiter, then the moon, or then Neptune. Well, oh, there's, yeah, this very Neptune. Wait, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, okay, what am I talking about? Another brain part. That's the second. I, I very rarely have any of those. Um, but yeah, so Neptune's in the second. Um, so yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, and to have your North Node and Pluto in the same house, I think I have a post about this, which um, I need to make like repost or make a new one. Is really important. Um, and when it's in the twelfth house, it's just like double whammy, like one thousand percent. The divine language is saying, like that, and of course, like you being a Scorpio and Pluto ruling Scorpio and Pluto being, you know, the ruler of your chart in the twelfth. That kind of the the dream, the dream world, the dreamland, right? And this opposes your sun. Now, by aspect, by degree, you know, the sun doesn't oppose Pluto, right? But Venus does, Mercury does, um, and I say the nodes do. These large orbs of those. Um, so you know, from that standpoint, it's almost as if um, it's interesting actually, because if you were an astrologer, if I was an astrologer who used like I don't know, twelve degree orbs, I would still. Like, I don't know, let's say I use like 15 degree orbs of the sun. Like, I would have sun opposite Pluto, and it would form a T square with Neptune. But no, that wouldn't, that wouldn't work the other way. But never mind. Never mind. NVM. Just looking for different solutions. Um, but yeah, um, there is actually a T square though. Because it's moon opposite. Wait, no. It doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, but anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, there's just a huge karmic impetus on service and on all things spirituality. So that's or all things the soul. Getting deeper, right? Leaning into <laughs> what might hurt you. What might feel painful uncomfortable um there can be this real theme of power and powerlessness different phases of your life where you know that so that's why it's so important to have a mission you know to have a real deep purpose that's not ego-based because in now it's beautiful that your jupiter's in the eighth house also i must say um it gives you deep spiritual insight and also spiritual protection now um, I can like feel the energy this reading it's crazy I'm gonna get one of my rocks two of them actually but um, yeah that's just fascinating to see that um so more on that later, um, but you know, as I did say, the relationship aspect, you know, Sun <laughs> opposite North Node, um, you know, it's it's kind of just like, you know, you're you're strong. I don't want to call it your ego, but like who you were, which I've already kind of like explained, like like kind of how it could look 
you know, um, did get in the way of your ability to um, develop relationships, right? Um, and also in your into your way of being able to, because it's sixth house, right? So it's like, that's the house of service, the house of day-to-day, everyday work, you know, work. So, um, you know, you were very much in the kind of material realm which kept you away from the spiritual and from relationships that were based on fairness. And sometimes like with this, there can be also like a power dynamic in relationships, right? Like dominance. Um, so it's about finding fair relationships, right? Where it's very balanced and even circumstantially and energetically. So, yeah, so with the Jupiter energy, right? Let me go back to my anonymous mode. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Um, so this, right? Um, the Jupiter. Very interesting because the point opposite right is is um it's uh the sagittarian second house um but because it's it's not a t square it doesn't matter but 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 jupiter being the midpoint which is like the coming together of the sun, the moon, the Aries and the Virgo, right? The Aries is so much, di- so different. They're five signs away. <laughs> signs that are five or planets that are five signs away. Energies are five signs away. They have nothing to do with each other, right? Um, now, they don't form an, an angle, a quinc punct. It would have to be like, you know, 22 and 22 or 22 and 21, you know, within like probably four five degrees for sun and moon um but still you know usually the energy here of father and mother would be very different in terms of like the life lessons or the the overall like what they consider you know their guiding principles would have been most likely very much at odds right and it can leave the child confused you know um i don't know if you've ever done this but when I wrote my book, which is called Pisces Live Nine Lives on Amazon, if you're ever interested, um, it's not an astrology book. It's a book about everything that I find interesting. Um, I, I had a part where I wrote about like my main teachings from my mom, my main te- teachings from my dad. Not teachings, just like what I took from them, you know, because I never really thought about it. And it was just crazy because I have some square moon. It was just crazy in their divorce. It was, tra- it was crazy to see how different they were, right? Um, I didn't, A lot of it was unconscious. So I always like, I always think that's like a really interesting exercise to do, um, right? Because um, a lot of it was, were things that I just had never really like thought about. So for you, you know, there's a high likelihood that's the same, that you experience them as two very, very different people. Um, now, with that said, um, Jupiter is about, it's in the eighth house for you and Jupiter, you know, it, it's, it's the planet of expansion. And, um, there's kind of two ways it can go. I already kind of talked about the different aspects, but you know, one way is the the way it's called the way of the ego, right? Where it's kind of like an overinflated view of the self, right? And it gets in the way of the person's ability to truly, truly progress um karmically right or or, or not kar- yes yeah, karmically yeah but like karmically on like an energetic level right which is what you're going towards um and also relationally um and like i said before it could be very easy for one with this alignment to kind of yeah to kind of like uh especially you know virgo moods also can be very um they can be very perfectionist for themselves um a lot of times they have mothers or whoever i i I don't call the moon a lot of astrologers are like the moon is always um the mom but 
in my findings, it's not like that. Um, it's not like that. And it is a lot more, um, you know, it's, it's the sun is like, is the more dominant parent who play a larger role. And then the moon is the uh, kind of more nurturing parent, right? That's how, how I've seen it. Like I just did like a family reading where I, you know, like it was the the mom who paid for, for uh you know who, who paid for it or who who got it done, and there was multiple uh, multiple different fathers for the different kids, and she was the son in every single one of our kids' chart because she's the one who's involved, right? Are the most involved. So, with that said, yeah. So it's not. I'm not like saying which one is which, but you, you know, it's typically the the moon is the mom, the sun is is the dad, but sometimes it's not. It's my findings. Um, and in my chart, like the moon is is my dad, for example. Um, but yeah, they would have been at odds, and it can be very difficult. So so there's like two. There's like the path of ego right that's that's one one way and where one can like with the sun conjunct south node where they can just totally just like you know and having having the virgo moon no one's no one's good enough for me um always finding flaws with themselves but also with other people so it really does take a lot of like self-love and self-appreciation right that's like a big thing that's being asked of you um, is to like of any Virgo moon, um, it's important for them to not be so perfectionist, right? For them to accept themselves as they are and understand they are amazing and that you can't always be a hundred each day. But with just the nature of Aries and Virgo, you have one that's fire that's very, very action oriented. And this maybe, you know, maybe relates to how you perceive your, um, your parents but you know having having um you know aries and virgo there's a high chance that um you know one parent and maybe there's like a very and perhaps you know there's a very very strong karmic relationship with the father um right let's just call it the father but you know if it's if it if it's roles reversed, you'll know. But you know, typically it's the father. <clears throat> but um, yeah. There, so there can be that a very strong karmic connection, <clears throat> and there can even also be some kind of interesting energy where the father sort of uh, has an energy that might kind of bring up that uh, that kind of past life greatness in some type of way, you know? Um, maybe even mim mimicking it, perhaps. Now, with, you know, the the moon, you know, the moon in Virgo, sun, sun in Aries, there's that, that major potential to, well, like, with, like, like, um, one in fire, one in, in, in earth, um, the fire wants to move forward, right? It wants to do, go, 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 go. Um, do, do, do. Win, win, win. That's Aries, right? Um, <laughs> probably a, a little bit of a shortened explanation, but you get what I'm getting at. So Virgo is not go, go, go. Virgo is think, think, think. Now, this is super important because the moon is, you know, I mean, it's a yin yang. I, I'm one of those, like I, to me, the moon is the most important part of a nail chart, but it's not like, it's like, it's like, you know, like if I, ha it's like if I had to choose one between sun and moon, I'd say moon because, you know, you can't be happy and feel secure without your moon sign being satisfied. Right. Um, so, you know, um, but having this alignment, the challenge, you know, rests in the course of the square, you know, with the, with the squares, uh, with, with Jupiter, both squaring Jupiter, um, or Jupiter being the midpoint and both squaring them. Um, very interesting because it's like, 
it really comes down to, okay, well, how, like, okay, so what version of, of Jupiter are we choosing, right? Like, like how, how can this Jupiter be in Gemini, right? How can this Jupiter be like, like uh, an asset or a liability? And Jupiter, you know, all about learning, all about, you know, uh, it's all about expanse, expansion. And I told you, I told you about some of the risks of the overexpansion um, and ego. But um, I think that the more you're able to lean in to shadow work, like real shadow work, it's not sexy, it's not pretty, you know, but it has like long lasting effects. The more you're able to do that, the less the ego feels, right? Because like the ego response can come when one is going through that that process of power versus power, like feeling powerful and then feeling powerless, right? And then having that karmic energy, it can make one lean into um, like, you know, like, with, with the Jupiter energy, it can make one lean into, you know, uh, kind of, the, yeah, like a, like a strong ego, right? So, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is Jupiter being at that midpoint is that the intersection of the sun and the moon is on Jupiter. So, Jupiter is a critical planet and there is the risk of overdoing it, as I've said, right? But if it's if if the square is integrated, which squares are meant to be integrated, right? They're meant to to be kind of difficult, you know, early on, and then integrated into strength. Squares are not meant to be liabilities, right? You're meant to overcome squares and have them become. I always give like the metaphor of like, you know, the, the athletes. There's like one kid who's just naturally really, really, really. Uh, strong, right? So he just doesn't uh, go to the gym and, you know, whatever. He just kind of, like, relies on, like, his natural whatever uh, strength. And this other kid who doesn't have that naturally, but he just puts in so much work, and then comes the game or whatever, and the one who put in so much work ends up being stronger. And then also has that grit and that determination that came from having to, to do all that, right? So, um, the high. So, so basically, the fact that, that they intersect there is really speaking to how, through the high energy of Jupiter, which is you know, which mixed with the rest of your chart is around surrender, spiritual surrender, um, interest in others' perspective. Right, like really, really be like a, a, a Jupiter in um, Gemini is a very curious person by nature, right? Um, they just want to know a lot of different things, but like the key is to not another another key with that is to not try too much, right? Like to not like and I've said this before in this reading, but to not just be the you know like like just trying. Um, too many, like, for example, too many different careers, you know, um, too many different things they're interested in and it's not being able to settle on one. But the high Jupiter energy, um, which will be very good for the Aries and everything else, is being able to, in, in the eighth house, right? So um, it's also linked, it kind of, like I said, eighth house Jupiter, it, it's like the psychologist, right? It's a person who has like this deep inner knowing of kind of uh, like, like I always think of the eighth house as like this dark place. A lot of people are afraid. It's the house of death, right? It's the house of death, rebirth, transformation. Um, you know, it's linked with things like astrology, um, psychology, uh, the underworld, right? So people who, you know, it's like the gates to the unknown and the 12th house is it's similar, right? So, you're being asked to really take that that leap. Now, the highest energy of that Jupiter house is to go and seek out as much information as much because that's because Gemini information and have as many conversations, right? So, like, um, you know, uh, meeting people, like-minded people, so forth. But really, eighth house is very personal, 
So um, there's that element of like needing to really dive in for yourself and just really look at the kind of ego versus soul. Um, I don't want to call it battle, but you know, maybe at one point in your life, it could have, you know, felt like one, right? Um, with these super strong energies. Um, so yeah, the integration, like, like the low Jupiter is, is, you know, is, uh, can be like kind of know it all, um, just like almost like a sense of like, like nervousness and anxiety that can definitely come with like a being a Virgo moon, you know, they, they, uh, there's a tendency towards overthinking things, being overly self-critical, um, and not, so this is really, really important too, is that Virgo moons, um, might not like they, they'll often choose, um, their emotion or they'll, 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 they'll they won't really necessarily trust, they'll, they'll choose logic over emotions. So, you know, like the classic idea of like, 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 like the therapist that just like, you know, like just like therapy gone wrong, basically, where it's like they're not really working on anything and they've been in therapy for years and, and they're just kind of talking, but they're not actually like feeling into the emotions about the thing. That's like kind of what can happen with Virgo moons, right? Is that they might not, because Mercury rules your moon, Mercury is neutral and it's, and it's um, you know, about information and communication um, and thought. Um, it can make someone like very, very um, kind of, you know, more prone or, you know, more, more like someone who is more about um, feeling or more about, about, about kind of intellectualizing. They can, there, 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 there's a word the, there's, there's a very high potential for intellectualizing emotion. So with, that Jupiter being the midpoint, um, but also squaring, but not forming a key square. So there's not like a resolution point um, in Sagittarius. Um, you know, you, I mean, yeah, there's a polarity point, and you could still think about, you know, like how, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you like Sagittarius energy is the opposite of Gemini. In the sense that Gemini energy wants to go and collect a bunch of information, and Sagittarius energy is about bringing it together, making sense of it, creating uh, kind of values, if you will, like kind of like like life, kind of creating their their life kind of values and in, in, in higher meaning, higher meaning from from that, right? So. Um, yeah, that can be, that can be something of importance, right? Um, for sure. Um, because, you know, Gemini energy, like I said, it can also on another level be very surface level, right? Um, but it's in the eighth house. So, which is very, very deep. So, um, it's interesting that you have, because of your, of your, of your ascendant, you have, um, you have the air, the air, uh, you know, the air signs in water houses. <clears throat> so, and then if you have uh, plants or points in there, which you do, there can be, um, you know, difficulty with kind of expressing and feeling into emotions. And karmically, you're really being asked to do this. So I think through the more knowledge you gain and the more surrender you're able to have, and the more acceptance you're able to have with respect to your spiritual gift and, you know, just like, um, all, yeah, yeah. To your spiritual gifts, um, you and just your, you know, your, your, your life purpose and all that, like you're able to really, um, you know, kind of prevent a lot of, of, uh, potential kind of ways of existing that are, are not, you know, good for what you're trying to become because, you know, uh, high, you know, your sun sign still is Aries. So it's not like you're meant to move away completely, like not be Aries. It's meant that you're supposed to integrate Aries and Libra and be 
and represents a high vibe area. He's a leader, but a leader that can also be diplomatic and who can also see other, you know, other someone else's side, where, where, where someone else is coming from, someone who's not hasty, you know, who's not just like making like impulsive decisions, um, who, yeah, who just like understands um others perspective and um aims to compromise and um not put themselves over other right um whether it's a business partner um someone you're in a relationship with right like that's the key now so i hope that makes sense right that the more you can learn about the esoteric and the occult and um, kind of different philosophies that kind of in a, that in a sense give you a different type of power, which is the power of you, you, you as a soul, not you attached to anyone else. Now, also, eighth house Jupiters are very common in people who receive inheritances or who you know may maybe marry someone. Or who you know who has who has money. It's not it's not like anything related to gold gold digging in any sense. Let me make that very clear. It's completely karmic. Um, but okay, and and also it's you know it's it's common in charts of people who work in you know like finance or something like that, right? Um, where they you know they're they're making they're benefiting from other people's resources, right? Like invest in banking. So. Um, yeah, it's interesting um, because then when we when we combine it all and then we have your your Scorpio energy um, and your ascendant, we see how that um, you know ascendant the way you look, the way you, kind of your personality, how that is really really linked to um, kind of pushing you into this this depth, right? Um, and it'll make you very interested in kind of the, the hidden side of the world and, or not the world, the hidden side of, of existence and really, really, really want to go deep within yourself. Um, and, uh, cause the mysterious eyes and that aura that only Scorpio risings have. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. So back to kind of what I was getting at before um you know aries and virgo are different so to find a healthy balance in the middle um is about using it aries is well understood how it plays out now virgo you know it can second guess itself it can be very perfectionist but i think in this sense with the jupiter it could be in the very, like, it could actually be a blessing because Virgo moons, yes, they can be anxious. Yes, they can intellectualize emotions. But at the same time, it's also square Neptune. And um, it is very it is very conservative. It's not, you know, it's not a gung-ho moon sign. It's, it's conservative. So um, it will, it, it, it would have the effect most likely of preventing a lot of of some of those potential behaviors. But with that said, you know, Virgo moons, you know, um, they feel comfortable when there's kind of a, um, you know, when there's, when there's a sense of comfort, not comfort, when there's a sense of stability in their lives, relationship wise, you know, they're going to want someone who is in your, you know, you have your Juno, which represents kind of your ideal, uh, partner in a marriage right um in capricorn so you know just those two together is gonna create an individual who you know definitely doesn't want to mess around when it comes to matters of the heart they want someone who is who they can respect right who who who, who is uh successful like not you know and success is is a subjective meaning right um successful in the sense that they they can provide a sense of security but i don't mean that 
just money wise. I mean that like, you know, you are sure that on all levels that that person you can trust. Sometimes Capricorn Juno people um, will marry someone older than them or, you know, some, but definitely someone mature, you know, because Capricorn is about foundations. It's about kind of the, you know, so if, if the relationship definitely like has to have a very, very strong solid foundation. Now, um, with the moon and Virgo square Neptune, that can be tricky. Why? Well, Neptune in your chart, you know, or in any chart, it represents, you know, many things. But um, in a square with the moon, it can create someone who is so sensitive, right? And, and I said your moon is on the nebula. It's very, you know, strong uh, fixed star. Um, but they're so sensitive that sometimes the weight of the world feels too much. Like it's too much, right? Um, let's go back to my face. So the way the world can feel like it's too much and let me make sure that my hot spot doesn't die too. Okay, good. Let's charge my phone. So the weight of the world can feel like it's too much. And like you feel so much. Now with moon and Virgo square Neptune, the mother could have been experienced as kind of controlling, but then also there could be somewhat of a vagueness to the relationship, a confusing, something confusing about the relationship. But really importantly, I always say this to my clients who have this, and a lot of times they're like, whoa, shit. Um, moon, square Neptune people tend to hang on to negative emotions, if they exist, um, of their mothers, right? Um, and I tell them and they either, you know, so, so it's like, it's more important to someone who's moon square Neptune, how they were nurtured than pretty much. Like, I mean, that's like one of the biggest aspects. Like if the nurturing was very, very chill and all that, then that's, that's really good, but super sensitive, right? So how you how your mother nurtured nurtured you is way more important than it is for 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 other people, nearly everyone else, right? Because you're very very sensitive to like the subtle energies, right? Um, so even as as a baby, um, if there's any negativity instilled in you, it would have shaped your life during those developmental years, right? Um. So, for example, like if there's any abuse or any, you know, mother playing, um, you know, acting like a victim, any any of that, right? Or or being a victim, right? Um, that can, or or like any like escapism, like any any of that stuff, like like or if there's a divorce, right? They sometimes a kid with that can feel like it's it was their fault, right? Um, it just makes the person and i've seen this so much like um one reaction to this being um being very escapist and very kind of like running away from reality and yeah withdrawing into like an imaginary like kind of safe and stable world right now of course if it's a healthy mother child relationship it's not like that right um but Often there's lots of challenges with women that um, kind of test your emotional fortitude, right? So the key with moon square Neptune, and this is difficult for a uh, Venus, uh, Virgo moon, is learning to express emotions, right? Um, feeling them, first of all, not intellectualizing them, feeling the, the raw energy and expressing them. Um, and, you know, the more you can do that around, you know, groups of people around and, and be very, very vulnerable and real, um, the better, right? Because what can, what can, another other thing that can come from, from Neptune moon is that can create, it can create all kinds of like paranoia, suspicions, like not understanding people's motives, kind of false realities, 
um, and also depression, you know, and, and, and addiction and, 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 and kind of different types of, of, of uh, psychological illness, right? Psychopathology. So yeah, like, like being able to have, uh, like to share your, your emotions, talk about your dream life, like your visions, all that, um, which is probably really, really interesting. That's really vital. So you need, whether it's a partner or best friend, whatever, like that person you can just talk to about anything, you know, and it's unhinged. Right. Um, also really important moon square Neptune is to share your suffering, right. To, sh to really like, um, really 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 just just tell because like like w people will listen when you you know get real and um it opens up a whole new energy sector right and you know this is this is like really really good for like all kinds of artistic talents um and it can uh, make someone shy but the more that they're able to become familiar with their self image, cause like Neptune. So, so I always tell people Neptune square moon and just ne Neptune film yourself, make videos, vlogs. If you have these type, you know, days or just in general, like, uh, pretend it's just like your little mini vlog, you know, don't show anyone and just film yourself. Right. Or in front of the mirror. Right. So yeah, that can create lots of talents as well. It's very interesting. Now, with that said, um, you know, having um, all of this, you know, the moon and the 11th, the sun, the 6th, uh, moon 11th is going <clears> to <throat> give you a big emotional link to your, to humanity. And 11th house moon, sometimes their biggest goals come to fruition later in life, right? Um, so that's you know and, and it's kind of like these like these larger than life like kind of goals right um and very very linked to humanity and, and causes you care about and a great uh emotional connection to your friends you know really wanting to find that that group of friends now i mentioned the grand trine earlier right um well actually yeah and then sixth house son I, I was just talking about that but i was going to get into like the whole sixth house in a second but um you know that is um you know it's it's just about everyday life right about work and um service i think in your case right north node and 12th house also could be related to to to, to let letting go of the ego and being of, of 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 service to humanity right um so but i don't see like you know a lot in your chart that indicate that would indicate like bad karma but like you know Yeah. So, um, yeah, the Virgo moon stuff we'll talk about in the follow up. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, there's definitely like a difference with, with Aries and, and Virgo, but Jupiter, uh, the more you can learn, um, the easier it gets. And about feeding both now, being the independent side, that, that fiery, fiery action oriented side, and then also the side that needs that stability. Um, but, also is square Neptune. So is very, very sensitive to other people's energies. You know, that's another thing about um, moon square Neptune, very, very sensitive to other people's energies and the environment you work in is very important. Your friends are super important to you, but they have to kind of be, um, you know, partner friends. Like there, they, there has to be a nice energy. I know it sounds obvious, but for you and like alone time, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot like a lot like a lot of your life purpose um is asking you to be alone which might be hard being an aries but aries sun but yeah but you do have uh mars which is you know the action oriented part of our chart right or the the, the kind of assertiveness function in cancer so that's interesting right because that's actually pushing you uh towards being more emotional and towards wanting to kind of like um, I have a lot of clients with Mars, Mars in, in Cancer. Um, it's it's fun, it's interesting because I see a lot of like really really rich people with Mars in Cancer because Cancer rules real, real estate. But it's in the ninth house, so it, it's giving you like a deep push 
for that exact Jupiterian thing I was talking about earlier, uh, finding that higher philosophy, right? Um, but yeah, Mars, Mars and Cancer people, they, they, they um, yeah, they, they uh, definitely a big, a big drive to travel, a big drive to learn. And, um, you know, it can feel frustrated. So you have to watch out for passive aggressiveness. You aggression, you have black and little in cancer. So that's kind of like the darker side of your personality. Potentially it's not a planet. So in this sense, it would be like using, like if you're not able to like be assertive, which you should be with being all that Aries, especially, you know, you have Mercury there too. And, and yeah, Mercury conjunct Venus though, which makes it sweeter. But um, people with that can sometimes, uh, it can be like about that escapism, right? It can be about like uh, not facing up to reality. Like I was saying before, you know, a lot of people with moon square Neptune, as I was saying, another thing is that, like if, if they're healers, like they might really want to be healers, but they just feel like it's too intense. Like I can't handle it when I see someone suffering, like it just becomes a part of me, right? A lot of them say that. So it's about learning energetic protection. Um, so yeah, I think that, um, yeah, there's just like, like you at your <laughs> lowest vibe could potentially use kind of uh emotion emotional manipulation playing victim um that kind of stuff but it's just a potential don't worry it can also be transformed into you know uh the highest energy of black and gold which could be um you know someone who is very very emotionally connected to their wisdom to what they're learning to to, to, to learning more and who is able to be very protective, like the Mars and Cancer of their family, um, and of, of the causes they care about, right? Um, you know, uh, there's like an emotional with Mars there. There's an emotional connection to your belief systems, which can lead to dogmatism. Which is also another thing about the ninth house Pisces, uh, Black Moon Lilith is that there can be like such an emotional connection to, um, you know, the things you believe that there can almost be like, like pushing it down people's throats potentially. But um, overall, you know, I, I think it's it, 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 it to me, it, it would be about, um, yeah, just not facing up to reality, crab call, calls back in the shell type of thing. Um, yeah. But also Black Moon with the Ninth House can make someone very at odds with like the, you know, the society's establishment. Um, sometimes people with this can like, you know, blame society for things in their life. Um and yeah, it's quite rebellious. Um, but yeah, as I say it can be dogmatic, <clears throat> and yeah, and emotional manipulation. Um. So yeah, um, really, really, just like um, kind of taking your responsibility in different situations is very, very important. So <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, I mean, like, besides that, um, really protect, really protective of your family, and um, the past. Yeah, like, 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 like when hurt, there's a potential to like uh, retreat into that shell. Can't the crab crawls back in the shell, right? Which I just said. So, just you know, and passive and being being passive aggressive, right? It's just the potential. So it's important to. To, to not be that like to not be like that and to learn to kind of like uh diplomatically right as i've been saying express your emotions um in a way that's not overly aries right but that still gets gets them across so um <clears throat> for that grand trying let's start by just like you know rounding out the six half the the big six. Um, you have Mercury, how you talk, how you think, in Aries, conjunct Venus. So that is beautiful. I'm gonna go back to my my little mode because I like it. Um. So that really gives um someone who is like Mercury impacts the Venus, giving 
you know, ma- making like kind of speech, someone like able to like kind of so, like like Aries is very forthright and blunt, right? But like like uh, in the the Mercury there will kind of just say whatever it wants, like boom, and it's, it's opposite Pluto, so it can get met with lots of con- confrontation. Um, but the Venus, you know, will sweeten that. Um, and then Mercury on Venus is very good. So, so that yeah, that's Venus on Mercury. Um, and it's very artistic, and I don't even know why I took the camera off. Let's just talk. Let's finish the screen like this. Um, you know, overall, it it's you're able to express yourself in a assertive yet loving manner. Um, and it makes one really love to talk to people a lot, and um, also it's very good for being a good listener. So that is needed in someone who's an Aries because Aries sometimes can just not be good listeners, but only sometimes, but not in your case, especially when your North nodes in Libra, this is very helpful for that because your, your North nodes ruled by Venus, which is in its opposite sign. So in love, Venus, uh, Aries people, they are go getters. Um, and you know Venus conjunct, yeah, like like you know they will be the ones that that go after even if they're you know and they, they they'll they'll go after someone but then in relationships they'll want that freedom you know it's really interesting um and it can make someone a spendthrift which I've talked about before like just spending too much right but in the sixth house you know really good for like the daily daily routine really good for like health astrology um and just like enjoying kind of every, everyday life right so uh in relationships. The Venus, Mercury, and Aries, you know, that gives you the need to have like a uh, very interesting kind of communications with the partner. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. And Mercury and Aries is a very independent thinker as well. Um, sometimes they say stuff too fast, <laughs> uh, talk quickly. Um, so yeah, it, it's about kind of like, as I was saying before, learning to harness that and, uh, yeah, ground yourself, which having an Earth moon can be very grounding as long as you're not so critical on yourself and so perfectionist. Um, but yeah, there can be like a big interest also with Mercury sixth house and like, and also Venus sixth house, pets, 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 pets. Sixth house is ruled by pets. The pets will be amazing for you. Uh, and you can have some very karmic pets too. Um, but yeah. You could literally actually be like a pet like channeler. <laughs> um, how crazy would that be if if you're like that's what I do? But um, yeah, like the Grand Trine, um, it adds kind of practicality. <clears throat> excuse me. With ambition and assertiveness so you're definitely able to get the job done but you know in this case we're talking about neptune trine venus which is like the one of the most artistic and intuitive placements in all of astrology um venus slash mercury which you know that one will add a lot of um beauty to your words and intuition to your words um very good storyteller really good at picking your words and kind of kind of you know creating that 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 story but the, the venus tri neptune is like zigzag yes yeah, less than a degree so it's really really like it, in terms of partnership it makes you very gentle very sensitive partner very but super like good with the creative and the artistic mind coming together right um the inspiration of, of neptune to think of the beautiful idea and Venus could be the painter, the singer, whatever, right? So also tons of compassion and understanding for other people. Hmm. And where is Kyra? No, it's in, yeah. So, yeah, oh yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. So with that said, um, that trines Neptune and then those trine um, Saturn. So that in itself, can <clears throat> Saturn and Neptune both hitting Mercury and Venus 
gives that part of your, you know, your, your brain, your way of thinking, your, you know, uh, Venus is how you love yourself and then love other people. Uh, it gives the ability with Venus to have very long lasting relationships. Um, and well, how close is it with Venus? Yeah. Um, it's not like so close, but it still counts. Yeah. It's, it's still, it's still within the range. And, um, really, really goes back to that, that whole foundational aspect of like of relationships, right? The glue that sticks relationships together, very karmic relationships too. And, Venus, um, and then also Saturn is in retrograde. So Saturn retrograde people, they often are like uh, replaying a life, a lifetime, or 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 one aspect of it, right? Some karmic lesson that didn't quite get completed, that you're really really trying to dial down. And it makes sense because your karmic lesson in this lifetime is so intense that um you know it's like it's, it's almost like enlightened, you know, not to put pressure on you, um because that 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 in itself sounds like something like like so like you know wow but like deep deep spiritual insight right um and it can look different for everyone so just a deepening of the self <laughs> and who knows it could be like you know a multiple lifetime journey right i mean it is for everyone right so <clears throat> yeah put those all together and then and then uh, of course like uh saturn trying mercury so good for intelligence Mercury is your brain. Saturn is memory. Being able to speak very fast and have all these good ideas with the memory, super good. Um, and just, yeah, being able to kind of, yeah, have like lots of like kind of solidified information and um, lots of common sense and playing and, and, and be able to like plan carefully. And Saturn's in your 10th house, which is the best house to have Saturn in. It rules your career, so it gives you organization of your career. And uh, I'll talk about that in a sec. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So besides that, Moon squares Vesta, which is interesting. Um, so that can um, create some difficulty. Where is Vesta? It's over there, yeah. And it's not so close, but yeah. Um, that's you know about work, but like like the funner version of work. So um, that can be like difficulty, kind of reconciling the need for routine and the other emotional needs right um so there's a need to find like a balance um we find like daily activities that give you this like real emotional sustenance um and it's about rituals so it's like it's really like like it's like it's like you're being called to like um find rituals um that allow you to express your feelings on a daily basis and that allow you to calm your emotions uh, so like yoga, meditation, and that would be really good for your Chiron in Taurus, which I'll talk about in just a second, which is on your descendant. Um, but moon, I like moon squares. I take very seriously. So, um, yeah, moon also square palace. Yeah. Um. So um. And where is palace? Oh, that's right. That's right. Your palace is right on my moon. That's cool. Palace is like, um, kind of like the more strategic mind, um, third eye, but also like I always think of like chess, you know, like thinking steps ahead. So, um, the moon square that can create like a conflict between emotional responses and intuition. Um. But also, like, so th there's, yeah, conflict between, like, the emotional responses and the intuition and also, like, um, 
the desire to, to fight for others, right? To fight for the causes that you love and touch moon is very based on that, right? Um, so it kind of, um, you know, you're motivated by that very kind of compassionate and nurturing side, you know, um, usually people with this, like, are very inspired by issues that kind of hit close to home, like, uh, uh, if it's like a humanitarian issue, um, and Mars and Cancer are very protective of the family, blah, blah, blah. But um, it can sometimes create like a issue with confidence when it comes to truly pushing for what you believe in. Now, you know, Virgo moons sometimes do overthink things and they go in these loops and then they doubt themselves. So that's like where your Aries has to be like, no, no self doubt. But um, yeah, with that, with this one's palace, it's like, um, you know, when your feelings are like triggered, <laughs> um, you can like push yourself outside your comfort zone um, and find the confidence to truly assert yourself. Um, so it's kind of pushing one into that, um, that shadow work, right? And that, that need to kind of, um, follow the, you know, the important, uh, aspects of life. Um, <clears throat> So, yeah, I mean, the best way I could put the palace one is just like, just like uh, the emotional self versus um, just uh, the intuition and kind of areas of special, in you know, interest and intellect or kind of, yeah. It kind of it's it's almost like a mini moon square, Mercury, right? Um, yeah, where there's there can be like that, yeah, the conflict of like you know wanting to like step out and 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 show the world their talent versus the fear of leaving the comfort zone. So, yeah. And also with the Vesta one, it's like like emotional self-care does not come easily. So you really have to push towards it. Now you do have all that sixth house energy, which is about the daily uh, routine and grind. So it's really important for you to have a very strong uh, energy there, uh, which I, I I would imagine you do because your south is there. And really finding the right type of spiritual healing, right? Uh, there's one other thing. So yeah. Anyways, um, let's see here. So I just want to kind of cover those. Um. So yeah, the Mars uh, squares the Mercury. So um, yeah. I mean, there it's just like, it, like, like that's just a con the the like kind of like a difficult concentrating difficulty concentrating um so many thoughts at, w at once um a real need to kind of ground yourself right um and like kind of push push yourself to listen which you know you do have good some good aspects for that but you know that, that's kind of a tough uh it could be a tough one there um but it's not yeah um like so so major um talk about that talk about that okay so here's so you do have uh, Neptune making beautiful trines to I, I said this already yeah um, already also 
with your Mercury, your mind, I want to talk about uh, these because it's super important. Um, so Mercury, try and best that. How close is it? Um, it gives a very inquiring mind. Um, thirst for knowledge that's like very hard to quench. Um, and a desire to like uh, study something very sacred, right? Um, then with palace, Mercury and palace, like um, trines are so nice because Mercury is the brain, the normal brain. Palace is kind of like that third eye, kind of like planning brain, but also intuitive brain. Um, so a trine between them, <clears throat> it puts those at ease, puts those together, makes those work well, right? Um, and it can make your intellectual abilities really influence your activism and your ability to speak up for others, right? Um, so very compassionate and just like, like very good for intelligence also. Um, and being like a spokesperson, um, you know, for a cause you believe in, right? Uh, diplomat, very diplomat. It, it helps kind of the diplomatic energy that your leader North is asking you. And it can make you like a good mentor or teacher for others. Yeah, just want to add that in there. Um, okay, so the last part aspect, <laughs> because your Mars is just squaring Mercury, that's it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, actually, <clears throat> Excuse me. Interesting. Black Lulu is square, the south node, and the sun. Didn't say that, but I see with my eyes. I have an aspect grid here, but yeah, doesn't tell me everything. Um, that's interesting. And um, that makes me think of, you know, with the Pluto being involved, potential past life, you know, maybe maybe you're a witch, but I mean, with the sun on the south node, hmm, I don't know. It's more like royal, but who knows? <clears throat> but um, so I think with that, you know, you have to just think, okay, well, first, what's sun square black moon look right? Um. That's step one. Um, and then we can add the karmic com component, right? So that speaks about like this, um, this uh, kind of friction between you being your complete self. <clears throat> um, you know, about what you really like. Kind of, it's kind of like the, the, the ego versus soul thing, right? Um, and the kind of like really authentic in the desire to be like appreciated by others, right? Um, so, yeah, there can be like dominance with this, like someone who just like dominates other people. Um, or just different power plays and relationships, but you need to learn that, you know, you cannot have everything in in your life like you can't have everything like you know you can't ever have your cake and eat it at the same time you know um so usually it makes someone um you know who has to kind of like accept their kind of aggressive nature so like having like a, a like a like a like, a, like a athletic or like some kind of physical outlet would be very very good um and yeah, just like accepting kind of like that dark, the potential dark, like witch in you, right? Um, a very, very strong willed uh, people sometimes can be aggressive, but they can be people who really speak out and who aren't afraid to kind of like have their voice heard about like the wrongs of society. Um, so yeah, like squares, squares create action, right? So, um, <clears throat> you know, it can give pr tremendous willpower. Um, activists, it's common have this um and just tough especially females tough females you know um <clears throat> but sometimes they're, they're they're not afraid to say the thing that might everyone else might not agree with but that's truth right 
Um, so, yeah, just also very, very, very refined intuition. And that needs to be listened to. Even if there's, you know, rejection and criticism, that's kind of the, the Lilith energy, right? Uh, and also there's a sexual aspect to it. So there's a need to like tame the sexual, you know, or there's something around taming sexual energy. Um, so um, finding a way for to have an outlet for that, which can relate to relationships. And, um, you know, find like, 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 yeah, like, like kind of societal standards um, and how you deal with those. So, yeah, just getting comfortable with your inner self. Um, but it's not so bad. Um, so if you, have, you know, it, it's just, it's just, yeah, like I said, very spicy, strong-willed people, you know. Um, and they care, you know, they care, they care about the causes. Um. I, I've been getting quite a few uh, people with similar kind of energies, right? Um, so, like lately, activist types, or I can see being activists. Um, and so it's like agitators, you know, versus the status quo. So, um, and also it can give like a dark sense of humor. Um Yeah. Very magic magical. It's 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 not so bad. You know, it, it gives grit to kind of like go and 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 do that thing that everyone's thinking about no one's taking action towards. Um okay. So aside from that um Yeah, so the fact that 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 um the south nodes added to that and it's closer can speak to how that same energy I just spoke to um you know perhaps you were like mother teresa or something like that, you know, like I don't know, like like someone who really spoke up against the injustices of the world but was very, very, very forthright. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. <clears throat> but I want to look at one thing. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I was just like like looking at, at what other people thought of like uh, nodes square Lilith. And one, one thing I found is uh, your sense of purpose and destiny is often at odds with your desire to break free from restrictions. You may feel stifled by your path and rebel or self-sabotage rather than rising to the occasion. Um, you will have to face fears of restriction and limitation in order to follow your greater destiny. When you experience a crisis of identity, it's usually tied in some way to your sense of purpose and a destiny. By following your destiny, you're also becoming more clear about who you are and what your gifts are. So that is actually beautiful because, like, your chart is so much. So it's it's kind of like, you know, there with the 12th house and just in general, there can be identity issues. Moon square Neptune, identity issues. But when you're going towards high Neptune, service, spirituality, all that stuff you find yourself and you find that true, 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 um, what's the word? Meaning and groundedness. Okay. So next. Um, mm -hmm. So I need to talk about these. So which one's closer? 
So opposition, Venus, Pluto. I know all about this one because I have the square. My brother has the opposition. I know several people with the opposition, lots of planets. Venus, Pluto can be very difficult. Venus is how you love yourself. Opposite Pluto, it can create self-hate. That's literally going to say it. Um, it can create very dramatic relationships um, where someone can be obsessed with the concept of love and expect people to instantly have that same enthusiasm intensity. Um, there can be lots of power struggles in relationships, even like violence, because Pluto rules kind of the darker side. So people of Venus and square opposite Pluto, they can like attract like very dark partners until they learn self-love. Um, so there's a need for like a creative a creative pursuit in, in finding your purpose. Who's FedEx who just said, you know, I agree with you, dude. Um so yeah. Um I've also seen like a that that one linked with like stalkers. Um and having lust on a, on an angle. I'm not saying you have stalkers and I, I pray that you don't, but um you know, it it, it 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 can really play out. Now you don't have like so many other aspects of this sort, but it can it can just really make relationships very, very tumultuous until the person gets to that point in life where they really truly I know it sounds cheesy, but truly love themselves and truly accept themselves, right? Venus and Aries, um, and you know, having Uranus in your first house also and just being that kind of person who is not like everyone else, like um in a good way, um, you know, just being like, especially with your your twelfth house, like 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 journey, like just like what, accepting all these complexities yourself, and understanding that like the relationship that you would need, and yeah, there is something that's very karmic and very mysterious about this, right? Like the partners you have, there's a real sexiness to it, right? Um, very dark partners even if they're good ones they could they could have some kind of darkness to them you know um it's, and it's a very like you know plutonian and like just ah you know scorpionic attraction right um but yeah like when someone has abandonment issues for example um which they, they can project a lot on their relationships um so of the stuff that like is from the parents or from the childhood they can project a lot of that so they really need to do like the work and the relationships end up being like this arena where you see how much work you've done. Right. Um, yeah. So you learn to surrender to your relationship because uh, a lot of people like, like want to control, 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 hold on tight, hold on tight. And obviously that doesn't make someone, you know, want to be with someone. Um, and usually it takes a few like you know pretty painful experiences before you know the lessons learned. Um, and also yeah, very important not to like fall victim to like energy vampires, um, dangerous people, drug addicts, like dark, like like dark dark people, underworld people. I mean, there's a part of it that kind of teaches one about the darker side. You know, a lot of people who have this like. They look back on those those people they did and they're like, yeah, it was interesting, you know. But I would never do it now. Um, but yeah, you have to travel travel into the into the underworld, called house Pluto, to to get that wisdom, right? You know, meditation, astrology, your psychic abilities, whatever it is, right? Um, so, yeah, it can it can it can show itself as self hate, but also it can be the you know like uh very 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 soul binding relationships and very current relationships now with mercury um that one is just more about uh, i can make someone become very very obsessed with their own ideas which i've talked about before and dogmatic um which they relentlessly kind of throw on other people right um so you know um uh, also um it can make people um kind of have like lots of opposition is an opposition um very very you know dark opposition um from other people with their ideas um so yeah there can be like issues with how to like rationalize and communicate um their thoughts um so 
Yeah. Um. Besides that. Hmm. Oh yeah, another thing about Mercury Pluto, just in general, it's like you don't just take things at face value. You need to like probe deep. It makes you just want to go deep, 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 and become like you can become like so obsessed with information. Um. So that's really dope. Um. And. But yeah, there's like just this kind of stubbornness to it a lot of times where it's like, you you know, which can lead to like relationship problems where you just don't like to be wrong. Um, not you, just the, the general energy. Um, but like another another thing about it is that like, like people are unlikely to like have that same level of like seriousness or, or just like interest in like the things you're, 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 you're interested in. So it's about finding those people. Um... Yeah. And like with relationships, you know, it's it's about just like having that self-awareness of your communication style and kind of how you come across. Um, but because of all these like intelligent uh, parts of your chart that show like intelligence and awareness, like I believe that, you know, you, you can transform that and go more towards that Libra, right? Uh, Libra, North Node, and even the Pluto's in Libra, but yeah um which uh is you know more diplomatic and better at communicating and seeing other people's needs okay so aside from that um you know Neptune in the second house can you know with in Chiron on the descendant there can be identity crises um you can be very very uh unrealistic in your assessment of your own self-worth um so there's a big need to link monetary values with spiritual values to have them like to think about the metaphysical value. Right. And this is the ultimate placement of someone who um, like is meant to be of service. Right. Um, because it's through the service that they can really see themselves, you know, and it could even be that through, through that they are like, uh, through something related to Neptune, which could be compassion, you know, healer that they can, uh, you know, work and make and make and and make make money, and Vesta's there too. So it's it's kind of adding to that. And Neptune conjunct Palace gives you like this really intense third eye intuitive uh, intelligence. It's really really nice. Um, Uranus being in your first house is interesting. Well, I was gonna talk about Chiron, but yeah. So Chiron the Descendant. Descendant is relationships. Chiron is pain. If Chiron is in Taurus, that is about pain around self-worth. So honestly, that's tough. Um, you know, at that point, um, you know, there's just, an, uh, it creates a need to, it goes with what I was saying before, how, yeah, a lot of, a lot of the, the healing is done in relationships. And they also, you could be a very good, healer like seventh house is clients so if you work with clients in a way like i do for example uh it's very very prominent and chiron taurus so many of my clients have this and it's around self-esteem right um early on like you know maybe it could be like hating your your body or you know crisis of values also um lack of self-worth right that a lot of people overcompensate by trying to accrue money and possessions um and there can be like a, a thought the be their body isn't beautiful uh usually early on um but you know it's really like so many healers i know have this right um and yoga i think is like such a good a good or meditation yoga are so good for chiron taurus because it teaches them to get more embodied and that's where you start to really feel yourself and understand yourself and on the descendant of course you know um you know, it's, you know, you suffer from, from, from painful relationships, you know, um, it can be, you know, with, 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 with the, the Pluto Venus, there can be like, you know, re rejection for your, by your, you know, from your partner. Um, but then over, over time, you, 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 you gain a partner who's able to, um, well, it goes both ways where you can have, where, where, where you guys are, are really having like a healing of relationship. You guys heal each other. And, Beautifully, your part of fortune is right in your seventh house and Taurus. Also, part of fortune is like your flow state. So, you know, your 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 greatest joy 
greatest flow comes when you're in a nice union. Not that you need that to be happy. Um, but also like, yeah, giving others, giving, giving others like, um, that, you know, whether it's giving, like being in a relationship or just, or, 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 um, just giving in general is, is really, really important to, to your kind of like feelings of happiness and, 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 and when, yeah, like, like you're, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then in Taurus, part portion Taurus, that's about how when you are stable, when you have found stability within yourself, firm foundations have been built, uh, in your relationship within yourself, um, you face some level of surrender, you know, and you found that like true inner peace without a need for codependency, which you don't have in your chart, but like Libra North know when you found those good relationships that fit everything I've said, that's really, really good. Um, so yeah. Um, mm, best and sad, palace and sad, you, you know, you can work really, really hard on, a cause and really, really see the big picture. Um, so yeah, um, it is someone who's, you know, the best definitely makes you very tenacious kind of in your pursuit of like kind of being a go-getter. Um, and then palace there, it gives creative creativity when it comes to making money. Um, like you can like have like very creative ideas to get money. Um, and in Sag, it's like really good palace. You see the big picture, right? So, um, every, very, very philosophical mind. Um, also very, very multicultural. Um, and I would, I would say like, yeah, a defender of truth. Remember, like not too much. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. And then, um, So, okay, okay, okay. So Ceres and Capricorn, so we're just rounding out. Um, so Ceres in third house and Capricorn, Ceres is like a second moon, but less important. Um, so, so you know, third house Ceres, um, you know, you look out for others by, it, I think, it, you know, it makes, it makes one a good networker. It makes one kind of like a social butterfly, kind of like maybe you like to gossip a little bit or hear a little bit of gossip um i said just a little bit um and you know you are very good at praising people and yeah um and, and it's a sign of course like um series in capricorn um with moon in <clears throat> in virgo they they try each other so once again you know uh my, my internet just went out but uh, first time, that's so bad. But anyways, okay, as I was saying, because uh, I have to use my hotspot, it sucks. Um, so yeah, so here's in Capricorn, you know, um, you know, you feel very nurtured when you achieve your ambitions, you know, when you're able to kind of like have self-discipline to achieve your goals and also maybe even like, uh, you know, help others because it's also how you nurture others like help others kind of grow up and mature so i already talked about your juno it's in the third house so it speaks more to like you know like i, I talked about the kind of partner you expect um you know there has to be also be like you know respect both ways um and that long term i already talked about that but like in the third house um you know that's that's about once again about uh, the need for communication in the relationship so um, relationships are really here to you, you understand yourself a lot through them. Um, okay, talk about that. Vertex and Gemini. Um, yeah, vertex. You know, very important. Uh, door to higher awareness. Uh, lots of intense experiences. Um, so you know, basically. In eighth, in Gemini, um, I just think that it's through these this deep inner work and being able to kind of like put words to it, 
um like um <clears throat> this deep inner work but being able to just put words to it but also just like um like spread your wings and try out a lot you know before you decide like what you want to master on like that's very very important that you're kind of doorway to higher awareness right your jupiter's there so um you know once again like just losing yourself to like spiritual energies um yeah so um yeah really like seeking like you know you seek like to understand like the great mysteries of life so you know if it's travel that takes you to to wherever you need to go like that's a, a big thing with your mars and ninth house also um so yeah saturn i didn't really talk about saturn did i well um you know um very good at following your own intuition um with the trying with, with Neptune and there's like a good balance between like intuition, and rational, the rational side of your, of your nature. So that's cool. Um, and yeah, Saturn is in, um, the 10th house. So, um, first 30 years could have had some setbacks, but that's really, really good to have in your 10th house. Um, there could be like a fear of public failure, um, and like kind of a cautious approach to career. Um, but you know, in early setbacks and all that, but then it makes you very, very hardworking. Um, and yeah, very respected in, in your chosen profession, you know, and it's, it's Leo, Leo mid heaven. So, um, you know, you might really want to, you know, take great pride in your work. Um, and some, you know, Leo mid heavens, like they, they want to shine, you know, what they do, um, fire thick, you know, they can really, uh, they want to, they want to have some fun with, with their work and, and, um, and their life and maybe children feature heavily to their life, uh, Dharma. Um, and sometimes the, the sense of self-importance is, is strong, very, very strongly linked with the public status, which goes back to that, you know, what I was saying before, mid heaven is also trying your South node, which means that your past life karma being that like person that we talked about, um, is, impacting how you're seen in this life in a positive way um but it gives yeah lots of leadership strength all that in professional life all right so i would start to finish up let's just see i think i already looked at everything so i did not on your moon and i said that nothing was there Okay. So yeah. Um mm -hmm. What's this? Aphrodite on your part of fortune. So that just like Aphrodite is like about just feminine beauty and you have lust and Aphrodite. I'm just telling you, like like lust is like what I refer to as the sex is sexy. Um, I don't, I don't have much experience with lust on the descendants, so I'm not really sure, uh, how powerful that is, but Aphrodite, part of fortune, you know, that's just like princess type beauty. So having both is pretty interesting. And then Eros on Venus is, um, yeah, um, you know, it's, uh, very, very passionate, very romantic, uh, Eros erotic. What can you say? Um, and uh nothing on the sun and, and uh, 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 uh what's this yeah and then you have fortuna on your ic which like i think speaks like um how um you know you're famous in past life but you know there could be fame you know in this life as well Perhaps you come from like a lineage, uh, and you know your family, you know ancestors, or just your your family 
eventually there's like some fame there. Um, and then Cupido Rising. That's another. I don't fucking go watch all my readings and see how many times I use the word sexy. But that's another one that's very flirtatious, and to have it on your ascendant in Scorpio, it can create that energy. Um. So I'm just fucking saying, like I said, I don't know what you look like. No idea. All right. That is it. I have gone for a long time. God damn. Where is my Zoom thing? So anyways, very important. Um, You already have the follow. Nearly everyone that books with me does the following. They get their reading and follow. Some people just get the reading at first, but they usually all, not all, unless there's like a financial issue. Um, you start with this reading. Um, if you enjoyed it, if you got a lot from it, which, you know, I assume you, you I'd hope you did because I gave it my all and I felt very good about it. And a very good energy. Um, the next step, you have the follow up. You have the option, which I'll give you at a discount, um, to where it would be two fifty plus the fees, which are probably like you know ten dollars, something like that. Um, follow up you already have. That's an hour after you've taken in this reading, taken notes, watch it, probably watch it a few times because it's very very layered and complex. Um. That's the hour where we just talk about this and we cement all the information. Now, after that is the current astrology slash spiritual alignment. It's a different reading. I would give it to you for a discount. I think it's usually at um, – so I think uh, – yeah. Let me know l – l like uh, – it would it would it would cost um normally in a, just I can't usually it's like three eighty um but I'd be happy to do it for two two fifty um two fifty so. Um, and that's yeah. I'm probably gonna start raising that, uh, to two seventy, two sixty. But um, yeah, I said two fifty, so you have to remind me of that. So let me know. That becomes like two hours. So it's on Zoom. We schedule it soon. It's not a long wait like this one was. And um, we meet on Zoom, and first hour follow up, just about this. And then we move seamlessly into the current astrology, everything that's happening for you, like now, plus my psychology, two masters, or two masters I have. Um, but really, it's just like all of my current astrology, understanding the year ahead, plus just like kind of an extended talk. Uh, that's why it's called spiritual alignment, because I'm much more than just an astrologer. Um, and those Re th those sessions are always magical like there's so many synchronicities but anyways let me know if you want that or if you want to just stick with the follow-up i highly suggest this unless there is a financial constraint this is my merlin stone by the way so thank you so much i went way over time but that's what i've been doing lately so yeah all right talk to you later ciao